is something that is very significant, especially for the diaspora, because you feel like you're owning a piece of Africa, um, especially coming from environments where maybe it's not as easily accessible and you feel like it's out of reach. But in Ghana, it's something that you may hope and dream about. But the other thing about land in Ghana that I know is um, I recently um, heard that it's about 80% of the issues in court are, have to do with land. And oftentimes we can avoid some of the, the disputes that may occur. So it's wonderful that we have someone from Lands Commission here today. Um, so the first question I have is about how to acquire and register land in Ghana. What are some of the things that people need to avoid to ensure that they have all the proper documentation and they're going through the right channels? As he rightly said, land is very critical for everybody, not only for diasporans, but even for Ghanaians as well, the indigenous. And so when it comes to the, the issue of land, everybody is like very alert, you know. Let me start from the, the land ownership structure in Ghana. So the ownership structure is such that um, we have 20% um, of the land mass owned by government and then 80% owned by the chiefs, traditional authorities, um, families, clans, and uh, individuals. So 80% is owned by these group of people. Now, talking about the structure of the land owning groups. So you have, you have uh, public lands, which I, I said are about 20% of the land mass. And out of the public lands, we have state lands and vested lands. Those are the two categories. And then when you come to the other areas, we have family lands, two lands, and clan lands and individual lands as well. Um, the types, types of interest and in land, we have uh, several types of interest and in land. So we have the allodial title. If, if I say the allodial title, we're talking about um, groups that have large tracts of land. So let's say um, a chief could have an allodial title or the stool who have an allodial title, which will cover a large tract of land, which can grant interest to, to other, other people. And then we have uh, leasehold, we have uh, um, license, and then we have tenancy and types of interest in land. Now, talking about how to acquire land in Ghana, I think that is the critical question that everybody would want to ask, you know, when you want to acquire land. So first of all, before you, you acquire land, you would want to um, identify an area that you think you have an interest. Okay, so first of all, you identify that, that area that you have an interest in. And then once you identify that area, you um, deal with the the, the owner of that particular property. So it could be a chief, it could be um, a family head, it could be an individual, it could be a clan head, you know, who owns that property within that area. Once you identify that person, first of all, you need to visit the area and see whether you like it. Do your own personal checks in the area to see whether it meets your purpose, but that doesn't that doesn't end it. You don't you don't pay just when you visit the site. Oh, this is a beautiful site. You know you have a good scenery and everything, and then there there and then you bring up money and you pay. No, you don't do that. You look at the area. Yes, you like it, but you need to do further checks to be sure that you know, the, the land is credible for you to, to acquire. So first of all, um, you need to get a plan for the, for the site, what we call a site plan. So when you have had a chat with the, the, the land owner, you request for a site plan. What I would advise is um, when you have agreed on where you want to acquire, it would be good to get a professional surveyor to do a site plan for you to cover that piece that you want to acquire. Reason being that 
most of the time, the site plan that the vendor might give to you might not represent the exact position that he's given to you. And therefore, if you use it for any transaction, you'll be referring to a different location on the ground. So it is best for you to get a qualified surveyor to come in and do the site plan for you. Now, when the site plan is done, normally these qualified surveyors are what we call licensed surveyors. They are accredited by the Lands Commission, okay? These surveyors are accredited by the Lands Commission. So if you are in doubt, contact the Lands Commission. We have um, a register or a list of all the licensed surveyors who are accredited, and we can, we can suggest one of them to you to, to get this done for you. Once the plan is done, the next thing you need to do is to check on the ownership on the land. So um, Chief A says, I own all this tract of land. How do you ascertain that what he's telling you is the truth? So with a site plan, you come to the Lands Commission and conduct what we call a search. Um, we, we call it a consolidator search now. So you come to the Lands Commission and then we would, with the site plan, conduct a search and through our records, we'll be able to tell you who is the rightful owner of the, of the parcel. And after you've gotten that information, you also need to be sure of the land use or the area. So um, every area in Ghana is planned. So they are planned for several uses and for several purposes. So depending on what you want to use the land for, if you want to use the land for an industry or for a factory, then you need to acquire a land in an industrial area. You cannot put up um, a factory within a residential area. So that is very critical for you to, to know. You go to the, the assembly, either the municipal assembly or the district assembly, which covers the area within which you want to acquire your land, and then make a search for the land use. And with that, you need the same site plan that was done for you to do the, the search at the, at the municipal assembly. And they will tell you what land use has been planned for, for that area. And then when you have satisfied yourself with all this information and it's coming out positive, you know, so you did the search, and it shows the person who really wants to sell the land to you, he's the same person in the records of the Lands Commission. That box is ticked. And then you go to the assembly and then you get, you get the land use um, um, for, for that area. You tick that box as well. Then you can start negotiating on price. Okay? You can start negotiating on price and then agree with a, with a seller on the price that uh, is, is appreciable to you. But even there, I would advise that you consult with professionals. There are professionals in the industry who can help you, okay? So if you talk to the Lands Commission, we can refer you to some professionals who can help you. There are private um, institutions who do this business as well, and we can refer you to the right people so you don't fall into, into the wrong hands. Um, after you've negotiated on the price, then you need to um, go into a contractual agreement. And with the agreement, there is a document that the landowner will give to you, which we normally call the indenture. So he will give you the indenture with all the citation and all the um, covenants that are relevant within that area, within the, the indenture. There again, it would be good to speak to a lawyer because these documents are prepared by the lawyers. So they are the professionals who can assist you to get the right covenants within, within the document. Um, before I came here, I was having a chat with um, one of the ladies and she was asking me and I was saying that you know, the, the covenants are very important. Most of the time, we get the document and we don't even read what the covenants are. 
but like the renewal clause and all that, you need to be very particular about all those clauses so that you are not um, shortchanged. Then, after you have gotten the, the indenture or the document, the agreement, you have to then go through the process of transfer of ownership. And with transfer of ownership, you need to come to the Lands Commission, submit your document, and then it goes through a process for the, the ownership to be transferred into your name. And that, that will be it after you've done the, the transfer of ownership. Okay. Thank you. And I, a, a, a question I have because I know you mentioned that the lands issues are, you know, both Ghanaians as well as people who come from the diaspora and, and other places. But I think that Ghanaians in particular, I mean, living here and having family members, they, they know that there's issues with land. And sometimes when the diaspora come in, there's this feeling like, oh, they're duping me, they're duping us. But that's not the case. It's something that is just a, a, a general issue within the country. Um, what is it that you do um, if the Land Commission does this to help guide diasporans in better understanding the systems? Yeah, thank you very much. So, um, like I said, whilst I was talking, um, there are professionals who can guide you in doing these transactions. Um, when you go out there, there are a lot of agents, there are a lot of middlemen, and uh, they would offer to help you, okay? But it is best if you deal with professionals. Um, you come to the Lands Commission, we can lead you to the right professionals who can help you to, to do these transactions. And also, like I said, there are institutions which are um, well-versed in dealing with land transactions, you know, as against individuals who call themselves agents who would lead you astray sometimes. So it is best if you deal with the institutions, more especially with the Lands Commission, we can give you the pointers as to where to go so that you don't fall into the wrong hands. If you go outside Accra, Lands Commission is nationwide. So we have our headquarters in Accra, but in all the 16 regions, if you want to acquire land in any of the 16 regions, we have offices in the regions, okay? So once you get to the office, they will direct you and give you some guidance as to who are the right people to deal with so you don't fall into the wrong hands. Thank you. And final question for me is, is there anything that can be done to help avoid um, your land being resold? Because that's happened to people before. I know somebody who it's happened to. Yes. Yeah, so um, what, what you can do to avoid your land being resold is to go through the right process. Okay. As, as I enumerated the process, you know, you make sure that you get the right site plan which reflects the exact position of the ground where you are purchasing. And then you do your, your search at the Lands Commission. You have all the information from the Lands Commission records indicating that the person selling the land to you is actually the person who is you know, captured in the records of the Lands Commission. You make sure that the land use is for the purpose if you want to build a residential property the land use for that area is for residential if you want to build an industry the land use is actually for an industrial area if you go through the process you are covered you know so even if there's a contest and it goes to court you are covered by the process that you've gone through and you you will not lose out wonderful thank you